read a passage for you from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 51 onwards. Can we put that on the overhead? And if we can all read that together, it will be very good because it's a, it's a triumphant passage. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable. That's another word for that. Will be raised incorruptible. That's King James. Imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable. And this mortal body must put on immortality. And when the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass what is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the church say, Amen. Thanks be to our God. Now I want to bring something very significant. Before that, let me give you an eternal principle or a solid foundational Christian principle. How many of you know when you read the Bible, especially New Testament principles of salvation, there's a concept which in, in theological circle is called, we are there but not yet. Meaning, there, is, there are things in our life that we already start experiencing, but the fullness of which we will experience when we see Christ. The Bible says we are already saved. But how many of you know we shall be saved? The Bible says, you know, we are Seated with Christ in the heavenly places already. But how many of you know the fullness will come when the Lord shall raise our bodies and we shall sit with him in heaven in true sense physically we shall experience the reality of it. How many of you know the Bible said Jesus said to the, to the disciples, to the people that were listening to him, he said, you know, if you believe me, you have already passed on from death into eternal life. So we all are waiting for eternal life. But Jesus said, if you are, believe me, you already are living in eternal life. Let me tell you right now, the truth that's going to be a reality in the future is made available to us by the Holy Spirit of God. So let me tell you something. We can already live in the, in the power and in the might of those truths even while we are on this planet. Are you with me? So let me tell you, even this truth that one day, I know people say, you know what, in this world we will just die and become like, you know. That's true, our bodies are not going to live forever. But I believe there is a principle, there's a spirit of life that's already working in us. Not after we reach heaven. For the Bible says God has already given us the heavenly nature. Not when you go to heaven, we right now possess the heavenly nature. Can somebody believe that life and abundant life is working in you right now? Not when you go to heaven. It's already your possession when you believe in Christ. Can I get an amen in this house? So keep that at the back of your mind as I proceed. Now, the, and so when, I, when the Lord told me, no corruption, meaning, you know, what is there will start to increase. Corruption is the opposite of increase. In corruption, in, in it gets, de, what do you call, disintegrated, what was big will start to become smaller, smaller, smaller. You know, if a body, however big the man might be, after death, if you look at the body after a few days, it will start to shrink, 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 and then it becomes just bare bones. Because disintegration is a principle. What you have will only become smaller and slower and slower. But let me tell you, God has put in us not a spirit of disintegration. 
He has put in us the spirit of glory. And the Bible calls it ever increasing glory. So let me make this very clear. As God's people, what God has put inside of us, it's not disintegrating. It's only increasing from glory to glory, from power to power, from strength to strength in the name of Jesus. Can I hear somebody who believes the Holy Spirit inside of you is a spirit of increase, is a spirit of glory, is a spirit of multiplication, is a spirit that takes you from strength to strength. If you believe that, shout a Hallelujah. But I want to bring three particular truths over here as to how you can walk in it. Truth number one. Truth number one. Please listen. This is foundational. It's going to bless your heart. Truth number one. From the book of Romans, chapter one, and verse number 20 onwards. Romans 1, 20 onwards. Please listen carefully. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived. Please read. Since the creation of the world, in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. But what happened to the world? Next to us. For although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him. But they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Next to us. What did they do wrong? Claiming to be wise, they became fools. How many of you know, remember the word that was coined was the, the age of enlightenment, where they dismissed God out of everything. Actually, the age of enlightenment was the age of foolishness. Come on. Because they thought they were becoming wise, but they became fools instead when they dismissed God. And exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, birds, animals, and creeping things. I want you to know you know, when worshipping God, now listen carefully, when you worship God, you need to know the image of your God. Because you become what you worship. And you know, when people were having problems, religious circles in India, I remember saying to many people, how can you blame these people? They act as the God they worship. That's happening even in the Islamic world. But let me tell you, when we worship our God, we should be very careful that we do not change the image of our God. If you change the image of your God, you become what you create. You become what you worship. You become what image that you you know, develop. You become that. But today, I want to declare today, in the name of Jesus, your God is a mighty God. Your God is an awesome God. So when you worship God, you have to keep that image of your God untouched and unadulterated. Because if you change the image, it will affect your life. Let me tell you, many churches go to, many churches in the city, and many people that go to church, they go and worship a God that they have created. A small, small letter G God. Let me tell you, that's not my God. They create a God that, pleases them. They create a God that soothes them. But I want to make a declaration over here. My God of the Bible is still the same. He's a God of might and wonder. He's a God of power and glory. He's a God of righteousness. He's a God of holiness. And we don't invent our God. He is God who cannot change. Did you get that? So this is the key that we need to understand. So the Bible says they change the image of the incorruptible God into a corruptible image. The word incorruptible in the Greek, listen carefully, it means which will not shrivel, wither, which will not spoil, which will not deprave, which will not become decay or change. That's the word incorruptible. Let me make this very clear. When you come to your, to your God, Make this very clear. Your God does not change. Now, is anybody in this place who can believe today the God of the Bible does not suffer decay? No, you didn't hear that. I said the God of the Bible is not a God of decay. He's a God who cannot change, who cannot decrease, who cannot disintegrate, who cannot shrivel, who cannot wither. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, if you believe that, can you give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of the Lord? A God. 
Because the Bible says, he's a God that cannot change. He cannot suffer decay. Now, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 49. Please read that. 1 Corinthians 15, 49. Something is going to happen today. Just as we have borne the image. So let me tell you, you bear the image of what you create. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust. So what was our image? The man of the dust. We shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. So let me tell you, you will start to carry the image of the man of heaven. And that image is not an image of corruption. It's an image of glory. Now, I don't know how many of you understood this. I'm declaring over you by the power of God's word, you're, you don't carry the image of decay, you're carrying the image of glory and power and strength and might and anointing of the glorious one. Can somebody shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord? But remember, it's all based on what you have created in terms of who you worship. That's the key. If you have created an incorruptible or corruptible God, you will carry that image on you. The Bible says because of that, God led them into depra depravity. God started to lead them or God allowed them to suffer destruction of their nature. It's all because of worship. What happened in creation? Brothers and sisters, the height of creation was man. On the sixth day, he was the glory pinnacle of creation. But do you know what? And from there, the descent happened. And the final moment is when God said, the serpent will creep. Will be crawling on the ground. That's the height of fall. Now look at this. The Bible says, for man, they started to move into creeping things. They're not evolving. They're devolving. They are going through a negative progression. We were supposed to be there, but we are going down, and finally we reached the, the most lowest point of, of, of curse, crawling. We were supposed to subdue, but now we are crawling. We were supposed to be on the top, but now we are under. And people are stepping on us. The devil is stepping on us. Powers of curse are stepping on us. We are always under. But let me tell you today, in the name of Jesus, change your worship. Change the image. You are not going to crawl. You are going to go from high, high to high, and from glory to glory. Come on, can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? Today it's a prophetic word over somebody. Your life is not going to disintegrate. Your life is going to go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. And your anointing is going to increase in the name of Jesus. Your family and your children are going to go from glory to glory. Can somebody shout a hallelujah? Because your God is a God of glory. And when you worship him, you bear his image. Oh, you are with me? You know what the Lord told me today? Some of you are supposed to be there, evolving into greater things. Started to devolve. Started to disintegrate. And finally, you're under, crawling. How are you, brother? Still surviving. How are you, sister? Mm, so, so. Let me tell you, that has to change. But it doesn't change in you. It changes in your vision of God. It changes in your understanding of God. If you believe that your God is a big God, can you make a shout of praise in the house of this God? If you believe he's not a God who changes, he's not a God who decays, he's not a God who disintegrates, he's a God of glory. He does not have corruption. If you believe that, that anointing is going to come upon you in the name of Jesus. Can I proclaim a prophetic word? This church is not going to disintegrate. This ministry is not going to disintegrate. The families are not going to disintegrate. Your children are not going to disintegrate. Because we serve a God who cannot disintegrate. Hey. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You know what I told the Lord today? I said I can proclaim with confidence 
sheer confidence about the future of our church. Not because some people came or some people didn't come. It's simply because I serve a God whose image I carry. He's not a God of corruption. He's a God of glory. Let me tell you something. Even when I, my body dies, the very moment I am being transformed by the power of a living God. Let me tell you, my destiny is not corruption. My destiny is imperishable. Immortality. Can somebody say yes? Ooh. But I need to give you an instruction as your pastor. You cannot devolve or devolve your God. You cannot, you know, negatively or what is the word I call, downgrade your God in your mind. Because the Bible says, you know why they, how they did that? Because of their futile thinking. Let me tell you, when issues come, when situations come, most of the time we think in the natural. By thinking in the natural, we become fools. We don't focus on our God. We don't talk about his greatness. Somehow we break down our problem to own satisfaction and we try to find ways around him. We try to find ways through it. But let me tell you, the Lord says, because you made your mind as your God and brought me down, you made me down, you brought me down, you made me decay, you made me disintegrate. And that's the reason disintegration is happening to you. But today, I want somebody to lift your God higher. Let Come on, if you believe your God is above your situation, God is above your problem, can you make a joyful sound in the house of the Lord? Do not disintegrate your God. Oh, can somebody help me preach over here? Can you tell your neighbor if that neighbor is okay with it? Do not ever disintegrate your God. Do not ever disintegrate your God. Because some situation came, because a problem arose, because there were some issues in your family, do not lower your God. Do not make a small God. Do not make, you think your God is corruptible. That means he did that 2,000 years ago, but something has happened to him right now. But let me tell you, the God 2,000 years ago is the same today. He's the same tomorrow. Can I get somebody who can declare the faith in an unchanging God? Lift up your voice and shout a hallelujah in the house. Let me tell you, I pray that this church will never fall into that trap. Because of higher criticism, because of theology, we have somehow created and a, a, a kind of a little space for this little God. When preachers stand on the platform and say, God did this in the first century, but he has somehow changed. I feel sorry for them. My God does not suffer corruption. The God of Elijah is the same today. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is still the same today. The God who raised Jesus from the dead is still the same today. Do you serve an uncorruptible, imperishable God? Lift up your voice and give the Lord a praise. Oh, this is a prophetic moment. You know what they did? The word exchange means they took God out. They took God out. And put something in it in, instead of it. Using their mind. Using their imagination. Using their thought process. Using the flesh. And because of that. From God. To man. To bird. To animal. To crawling. Look how they disintegrated God. From God to man to birds to animals and creeping things. Now God is a tiny creeping thing in their minds. And God said, what image you make, you'll bear that image. But tonight, I'm releasing an image of God.
Now, this is a prophetic moment, so let me give you a chance. We are declaring this over unseen city of Edmonton and over our land. We don't have a God who has suffered changes over the years. He has not disintegrated. He's still the same. If you worship such a God, if that's the image of your God, you are going to carry that image in your spirit. Come on. If so can you make a prophetic noise in the house of the Lord? We, and you can do better, you can do better. If you believe your God has not changed and will not change, make a noise of joy in the house of the Lord, the God. Hey. Is there anybody who's not understanding what I'm trying to say? The God that you serve, he's not a puny, tiny God. He's a God above every God. He's a King of kings and Lord of lords. He's a God that cannot change. Can you say yes? Ooh. Ooh. I feel like preaching. I feel like preaching. You know, when I bear that image of that God, I declare over my body. I declare over my life. I declare over my spirit. I'm not disintegrating. As my God is, I'm going from glory to glory and power to power. Can somebody shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord? Can I share a story with you? A story that I can never forget as long as I live. The situation in this church was not always this appealing. We were in the White Avenue Church. And there was one night, we were supposed to take the Bible study. It was a cold winter. Hardly a few people had come. But it was not the number. That night, I was under tremendous stress. I thought my life, my family, everything in my life is going to come to an end. A sense that was not just foreboding, it was so strong on me. I walked in order to take the Bible study. In fact, I walked late. Pastor Reynard was there. The sense that it's all coming to an end. What am I doing in this city? What am I doing here? I just got up. This is my plan. I wanted to go tap Pastor Reynard and say, Pastor, would you take the class tonight? I'm leaving. Because I felt I didn't even have strength to sit there for five minutes. And my plan was I'll come back home, write my resignation, and leave this place for good. I can never forget this for the rest of my life. I got up to go tap Pastor Reynard to ask him to teach tonight. A voice appeared from nowhere. And the voice was this, likewise, likewise, the Holy Spirit helps us in our infirmity. And the voice likewise was like a thunder. So I stopped in my tracks. I opened the Bible to see, because I knew it's from Romans 8. What is the meaning of the word likewise? Meaning something must have happened before. And the Holy Spirit is shedding light on it. And I tell you, today if I'm standing here, it's because of that one word, likewise. And the word was this, Romans 8, 28, likewise. 26, likewise, Romans 8, 26. Can you please put it fast? Likewise, the Spirit helps us. What is the word likewise? What is the background to it. And the Lord told me, read. Read. And I heard this. Verse number 20 onwards. Verse number 20. For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Next, keep, 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 keep going, please. For the creation itself will be set free from its bondage of corruption. And obtain the freedom of the glory of children of God. There will come a time the entire creation will be set free from corruption. 
the leaves of a tree is not going to fall down. It's only going to bring healing. The fruits of a tree is not going to dry up. It's going to bear new fruit every month. That's going to be the restoration. Now the creation itself will be set free and obtain. Next verse. For we know the whole creation has been groaning. You know what the creation is groaning? To be set free from corruption. The creation says, I don't want this corruption. I don't want to decay. But God said there's a time for it. First, I will transform the children that are saved, that are mine. Till then, you have to wait. Let me make this very, I'm not against taking care of our environment and planet. Please take care of it. But make no mistake. Nobody can rectify this planet until the redemption of the children of God takes place. First, you will be redeemed. You will, be, you will overcome corruption. And then the creation will follow. Come on. Because the creation was subjected to humanity. God said to Adam and Eve, rule over everything. That day is coming. But in the meantime, the creation is crying. Deliver us. Deliver me from corruption. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruit of the Spirit grow inwardly as we wait. Every time we look at things changing and decaying, we cry, we don't want to. A son's a redemption of our bodies. That's a redemption of our bodies, by the way. For in this hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? And then, verse number 26. Likewise, the Holy Spirit helps in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groaning. You know what the Lord told me? Just like the creation is groaning to be delivered from corruption. The spirit is groaning inside you. You know what the spirit is saying? Lord, let Anison be delivered from corruption. That moment something happened. I felt like a thousand volt of energy just hit me. I became transformed as a new person from a runaway mouse to something like a lion. I walked to the friend and I said, I've got a word from God. And in that little meeting in the basement of White Avenue or in my own house, I made a statement. I said, this church is going from glory to glory. We are not going to have what we have today disintegrate. We are going to have it increase. Every ministry is going to increase. Everything in my life is not going to become once in a time the man was used by God, but then everything fell down. Everything fell apart. That will never be spoken about me. Let me tell you, even after I die, the ministry is going to increase in the name of Jesus. Can somebody give a Lord a praise? And this was a time that we had the biggest attack on our church in Dubai. And I wanted to know, one or two churches we had, and Pastor Elias gets arrested. And Pastor Elias later told me people, some of the people left. Even four elders left when the pastor got arrested. Our tithe came down to 15% of what it used to be. And everything screamed, because that's a kind of an, in a nerve center for Tammy. Everything is going down. And that day the Lord told me, it will not. It will only go from strength. Not because of you. The Spirit of God is going to prevent decay. And today, let me tell you, from one or two churches at that time, we are now this week celebrating 23 churches in that place. 
over 4,000 believers. Let me make this very clear. As long as the Holy Spirit is inside of you, you are not subjected to the spirit of corruption. You are subjected to glory, to glory, to glory. Come on, can I see somebody who's got the whole... Now, hey, is anybody who's got the Holy Spirit inside of you and you know the Holy Spirit is going to take you from strength to strength, from glory to glory, can you make a sound of joy in the house? Hey, you can do better because an anointing is now coming upon you to set you free from every corruption, from every decay. Your family is not going under. It's going from glory to glory. Hey. Come on, somebody receive it. Somebody receive it. Now I'm going to give you maybe a few seconds. I'm going to give you this moment. If you believe the Holy Spirit inside of you is preventing corruption. Yes, there will come a time your body will not be corrupted. But right now everything else, everything from God in you cannot be corrupted. That means it cannot disintegrate. The Holy Spirit is crying. And how many of you know when the Holy Spirit groans for somebody, Father will hear it. There will be answer. If you believe that everything that God has given you is going to only become more glorious, I want you to start doing an action of faith. This is not because of the economy. This is not because of the circumstances. It's because of the Holy Spirit. If you believe that, can you make some joyful gesture in the house? Come on. Can you do something better? Can you do something better? If you know the Holy Spirit will prevent corruption, can you make a faith declaration? Everything that you have today is going to increase. Ever increasing glory, your ministry, your anointing, your passion for Christ, your faith. Come on, your finances. All that God has given you is going to be blessed and blessed and blessed. If you believe that, can you declare it in the name of Jesus? Put your hands together. Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house. Hey, hallelujah. I want you to lift up your hand right now and let me make a prayer over you. The Holy Spirit is praying for you right now, saying, Father, let corruption be stopped. Let it be from glory. We talk about the glory that Moses saw, but I'm here to say, in the light of what God has given you, that glory is nothing. Oh, don't you look at me like that. I said the glory that Moses saw was nothing in the light of the glory that God has given you. Because the glory that Moses saw, however big and mighty it was, it was a fading glory. But the glory that we have through the Holy Spirit is an ever-increasing glory. Come on, if you are a person who's going to walk in ever-increasing glory, make some steps, take some steps, make some declaration, ever-increasing glory, put your hands together, give a Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. Your glory will not be a disintegrating glory, it shall be an ever-increasing. Hey, if you're standing, remain standing. Let me read one more passage for you. First Peter, Second Peter, one. I think verse number two, three and four. Second Peter one, three and four. Second Peter one, three and four. His divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who has called us to His own glory and excellence. God has called you to glory. Somebody says, called you to glory, not to disintegrate. Glory. Hey, church, can you do me a favor? Can you lift your hand towards me and say, Father, Pastor, your call is glory and excellence. By which he has granted to us his precious and great promises. So through them you may become partakers of divine nature. You can start walking in the divine nature having escaped corruption. When you have some promise from God, 
God says, that's my way of protecting you, that you will not disintegrate. As long as this promise is in you, you are not going down. This promise is going to keep you alive. This promise is going to give you strength. Is anybody in this place who can testify, Pastor, when things all fell apart, it was God's promise. Come on, if you, if you are a witness to that, can you give a lot of praise in the house? I had nothing going in the natural, but God's promise. God's promise is what, you know what? In the worst time of my life, it was only his promise that kept me going. Even today. I have nothing else but his promise. And if you hold on to a promise, you will de get delivered from this disintegration. And there's also a passage which says in 1 Peter 1.23, 1 Peter 1.23, look at this. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, when God made you born again, he put a seed in you, not a seed of corruption, but imperishable. Can I hear today Anybody in this place who can witness God has planted in you a seed, the word of God that can never perish. Amen. Church, since it's a moment that's going to touch the future of our church, can I ask you, anybody can testify in this place, Pastor, when I'm born again, when I got Jesus in my life, he put inside of me. And that's the reason even when I go through the worst situation in my life, I wake up with hope. Anybody knows what I'm saying? Because there's a seed inside of you which will never be corrupted. If you believe that's a seed of the word of God, make a thunderous phrase. Come on. Anybody who's got that seed inside of you? As long as the seed is inside of you, the seed is going to keep on giving you life. Life, life, life. Anybody knows what I'm saying? Life. Can you give high five to somebody and say, I have life. Come on, give a high five. I have life because of the seed that cannot be perish. There's a seed inside of me that cannot be corrupted. Come on, hallelujah. Believe it, believe it, believe it. Believe it. It's the Holy Spirit that's protecting you. It's God's nature that's protecting you. Right now, it's the Word of God that's holding you together. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hey. I know many of you can witness to that. When you thought it's all over, the seed will start coming out. A word from God. Because that's the seed he planted in you. The word of God is always alive. Always producing life. Always, you know, it can never. Let me tell you, no powers of darkness can kill the seed. Tonight that seed is inside of you. If you believe that, you are going from glory to glory, from strength to strength. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. I don't want to give a mass kind of a historic moment here, but I want to pick people out. Anybody knows here that it is a seed of God's word that kept you alive, that kept your family alive, that kept your hope alive. If you think that's your testimony, can you give God a thank you for the seed that he planted? Come on, this is between you and your Savior. Between you and your God. He planted a seed inside of you. Imperishable. Hey, come on. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! How old is he? One year? There's something happening with this child. One year old. Anytime there's a very powerful word, the little one-year-old will start mocking friend. 
Right now he's walking and he gives the best clapping. Come on, because seed is planted. Hey, he, look at him. Look, he knows the power of the seed. Can somebody who knows the power of the seed make a joyful sound in the house of the Lord? Seed, seed, seed is planted. Let me pray for you. So as long as you have got the nature of God, it's a nature of no corruption. Can you believe today? You are not going to become ringly. I'm not saying, don't, don't, don't go take it to the extreme and say, if God gives a grace, go for it. If God gives a faith. But I'm not just talking about, you know, wrinkles in your bodies. I'm talking about everything that God has planted in you. It will remain. Even your health will be protected. When the time comes for God to call you back home, he will call you, but then you're not dying. You're already in eternal life. But how many of you want to say, I don't want to be living a life that is disintegrating every day. I want to live a life where it will show the nature of my God from glory to glory. Can somebody say yes tonight in the name of Jesus? Number two, do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you believe the Holy Spirit is the one who is protecting your life, protecting your sanity? The Lord is telling somebody, even your sanity is protected because of the Holy Spirit. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah. He's protecting it. Number three, do you believe the imperishable word of God is in you? As long as his word is inside of you, you can go through the worst situation in your life, but it will spring out tomorrow. You'll come out bubbling because the seed is always a seed that will never disintegrate. Come on, it's moving in your body. If you believe that, I want you to, just for the next five seconds, do something outside the box to express your faith that the seed inside of you is a seed of glory and that can never... Do, 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 do whatever you want to. Go with this word. In England, I had an encounter, and I heard, I started crying. He gave me this word, but next growth of the church. You know what the enemy tells me sometimes? You can have all this growth, and ah, come on. It's not easy to sustain it. And I declare here, every growth from God will be protected. I believe my God. And he gave me a promise in England. It was an encounter that I had in a sleep. And this is a word he gave me. And that's the reason I preach this today. Acts 13, 33, and 34. We'll just read and go back or go for the missions. This he has fulfilled to their, as their children. By raising Jesus. As also it is written in the second psalm. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As for the fact that he raised him from the dead. No more to return to corruption. I heard a thunder in my spirit. No more you will return to corruption. No more your family will return to corruption. No more your life is going to return to corruption. Can somebody say amen to God's word? No more. It came as a thunder. It came in a dream. No more because he has said this way. I will give you the holy and the original language is sure mercies. Yes, of David. As long as you've got God's faithfulness, loving kindness over you, you will not return to corruption. So can I declare this? This church will not return to corruption. Our ministry will not return to corruption. Every promise of God will not return to corruption. If you can believe this, I'm going to declare this by faith over you. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you will not return to corruption. If you believe that, make a joyful sound, receive the word, and go.